In this week's drone news update, we'll talk about AUVSI drone prepared, a chance for those in Florida to comment on the country of origin ban, the new EB vision, new CBOs approved by the FAA, and finally, what happens today, that's a bit of a story, let's get to it. Your first story this week is AUVSI Drone Prepared. Uh, this is a countrywide initiative to help coach the state lawmakers that are creating drone-specific laws in their state. Uh, the goal of Drone Prepared is to make sure that the states have uniform laws on drone use, along with preventing the privatization of airspace, which is a big deal. Uh, we think that this is a fantastic idea. We're big proponents of uh, accessible airspace all across the country. Uh, to discuss this topic, we actually have a guest today, uh, Scott Stuffman, who is the manager of Grassroot Advocacy uh, at AUVSI. Scott, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Greg. So this is, uh, this is a pretty big uh, undertaking. Can you tell us a little bit more about the, the reason behind why AUVSI wanted to get into, uh, into this? Yeah, thanks, Greg. So for Drone Prepared, really, it's the culmination of being involved in the states in regulation over the last few years. Uh, I joined AUVSI officially in January. So I've been there for just over a year. And prior to that, I was a chapter leader in Texas. And we were fighting these avigation easement bills, essentially a lot of this work where we had interests that wanted to put drones in tollways in the sky, right? And force us to operate only in specific areas. So what we wanted to do was start conversations with states and really get ahead of having to play whack-a-mole. So from being really reactive to getting to a place where we're proactive, we're having useful discussions with AVSI as an association, with our chapters as knowledge experts, and with industry really just to get states truly on board with an understanding of how can we be truly ready for what drones can bring to our states, whether that's coming from the perspective of businesses that are already operating or people that want to bring in new operations to states and cities. So I'm lucky to live in a state that already has an exemption. Can you talk a little bit more about currently, um, first off, what is it that my state does in Arizona, for example, and what, are the, what, what does it prevent other cities and things to do? And uh, second, what is the current uh, situation with other states that, that don't have that preemption? Why is this, uh, I'm not going to say a bad thing, but why is this something that we need to be careful with? Yeah, so our goal always is to try and find some certainty so that operators understand what the, the rules are and so that state and local people who have an interest also understand what the rules are. And what state level preemption does is it establishes what are the ground rules? What, are, what should everyone expect to do? And I think we've got you know more than 15 states or 17 states that have some form of state level preemption, which essentially means that rules around aircraft, including drones, are made at the state level, right? So we let the FAA handle the air navigation safety and operational safety, which they've been responsible for since they were established. And when we let the states really touch on the issues that make sense to them, whether that's privacy or uh, you know time, manner, and place types of regulations, things where we want to make sure that the states have their power and the locals and municipalities have their power and the FAA is able to provide safety of the national airspace system. So we want to avoid essentially having a patchwork system of regulations where if I wanted to, as an operator to go from one town to another, I wouldn't expect completely different rules about what I'm actually doing in the air. Yeah, and this is important to do now before the system gets too complex, before we have more complex beyond the line of sight operation and all that, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, as we start to get more and more operations beyond just the drone provider who is, is flying commercial, uh, whether we're talking about inspection or we're starting to get into things like drone delivery beyond visual line of sight operations. And then we start looking towards advanced air mobility, electric vertical takeoff and landing, larger aircraft, really true integration of drones and other small aircraft systems in with traditional aircraft and uh, future aircraft. Is there anything that uh, the people that are watching this video every week can do on their side to help with this? How, how does the, the community get involved with this? Yeah, so we set up a website at droneprepared.org where you can actually find out more about the specific plan itself. We are having conversations with state and local lawmakers, and we're working with our chapters to enable those conversations further. So if you don't know about AUVSI, the Association for Uncrewed Vehicle Systems International. We focus on all things uncrewed, ground, water, air. And uh, this is very our first uh, foray into really focusing on the state side with drones. 
So take a look, go to AUVSI.org, go to DronePrepared.org. If you have questions or if you have an interest in participating, reach out to us directly and we'll get you connected. That's awesome. Well, Scott, thanks a lot for all the effort and uh, thanks to AUVSI for doing this. I think uh, I really look forward to seeing the, the results that you get. This is this is extremely critical and we you have our full support. So thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate you uh, training a lot of intelligent and smart and safe students through Pilot Institute. Well, thanks. All right. Thanks, Scott. The second story this week is an update on the Florida country of origin ban. Uh, If you're not familiar, local, state, and contract drone pilots are not allowed to use their Chinese drones such as DJI or Autel if they fly in Florida. Uh, This does not affect civilians at the moment, but this has had a severe impact on public safety agencies across the state uh, being grounded from using their DJI drones or their Autel drones. Uh, And now the Florida legislature is opening comments on cybersecurity rules for the state, and this This may actually help reduce or even negate completely the effect of the Florida ban on non-blue UAS. Uh, Make sure that your comments remain professional, and if you're a public safety agency, make sure that you explain how not being able to utilize your drone is going to cost both time and possibly even lives. Uh, We'll put a link down in the description for you to make your comments. Your third story this week is a teaser for the new EB Vision drone. Uh, This is an ISR, which stands for Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance. It's a fixed wing drone. It has a reported 32x zoom, a thermal payload, and also a 90 minute flight time. It's going to be interesting to see if this new EB drone is actually a blue SUAS or not, and if it remains a category three designation that the other EB drone uh, received recently. Next story this week is actually a good one. We have new CBOs approved by the FA, uh, Flight Test Community Association, FTCA, and the FPV Freedom Coalition are both approved now as. As CBOs. Uh, their approved guidelines are also posted on their website. We just took a look at them a little bit earlier today. We're actually preparing a video comparison of all three CBOs that are currently approved, so uh, give us a little bit of time to digest all of this information. Uh, remember, if you are flying recreationally in the U.S., you must, you must select CBO guidelines of your choice. Uh, the list of approved CBO is posted on the FAA website. Uh, you can choose any CBO you like before any flight, so uh, if you do a flight of a certain certain type and you do another flight of a certain type, you can pick two different CBOs. Just make sure that you're ready to explain those CBOs to uh, the FAA if they were to um, ask you questions. Uh, Their guidelines are available on their website for free. This is important. We did get a lot of questions last time. These have to remain free. If the CBOs are trying to charge you money to access the guidelines, they need to be reported to the FAA. Your final story this week is that today is the end of the remote ID extension for manufacturer compliance. What this means is that every drone manufactured for sale in the United States even the ones on Amazon, uh, need to be remote ID compliant as of today. Uh, We do have a lot of questions that are still unanswered. Uh, I'm not uh, trying to uh, steer the pot here, but I do want to share the question because uh, I want to make sure everyone uh, starts to think about all of this. Uh, First off, who is responsible for verifying that their drone is remote ID compliant? Uh, Chances are it's going to be you, the pilot in command. Um, What happens to home builders of drones that are operated under part 107? We create drones at F- at Pilot Institute here, and uh, these drones uh, that are going to be created after today are going to have to have some sort of remote ID compliance because uh, that's the way that it's written in rules. Uh, we were told by the FA that this is not what they meant, but at the moment, it still is the way that it's written in the rules. Who is going to enforce if a manufacturer doesn't comply? How do they enforce those rules? How do you find the manufacturing date of your drone to ensure that it is indeed compliant? A lot of questions, very little answers. Make sure you let us know in the comments what you think, and we'll see you next week. Who is going to enforce if a manufacturer doesn't comply?